have everyone in the house, and for all of you that's on Zoom, we're happy to have you. We're here to hear what God has to say to each one of us today. So let's govern ourselves according that we'll be ready to worship. Let's give the Lord a hand clap. Give him praise and honor to our, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to our own pastor and first lady. We want to thank God for them. Let's give them a hand clap. And also our assistant pastor, Reverend Leo Davis. We thank God to have everybody here. And uh, we're going to uh, have a word, word of prayer. And uh, so let us all bow, please. Eternal God, Lord, we come this morning. We come, Lord, just to say we love you, Lord, and we thank you. Lord, we thank you for shining down on us one more time. We thank you for giving us the opportunity to get up out of our own beds, that no one had to dress us, no one had to put our clothes on or do anything for us. But, Lord, here we are. We're here in worship service, Lord. We're here to worship you because you are the reason we're here today. And we thank you. We love you. We bless your name because you're the God that sit high and look low and knows all about us. You know our shortcomings as well as our long. And so, Lord, we just thank you that you allowed us to be here. So, Lord, I ask that as the day go forward, Lord, and as the preach word come, that you would speak to our heart and our mind, Lord, that we would gravitate to it, Lord, and that we would let it resonate in us and through us and make us better, Lord, that, we are, we are, that you would be proud of us. And so, Lord, we thank you. We thank you right now for our own leader of this church, New Pilgrim Rest, him and his wife, Lord, for the, the, the task is not easy, easy, Lord, but, Lord, you continue and you continue to bless him and his wife and New Pilgrim Rest. And we thank you for that alone, Lord. We love you for that, and we thank you. Now, Lord, we just pray for the speaker of the hour, Lord, that you would rain down blessing, Lord. Lord, rain down blessings right now. Build him up, strengthen him, Lord, anoint him. Give him everything he needs to stand at this podium and say what thus saith the Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord, and we're here. We're ready to worship you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Thank God. Amen. amen. Now you're in the hand of our music department. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made. I don't know about you, but come on, let's rejoice and be glad in it. Any thankful hearts this morning? If that's your testimony, come on and stand up and clap your hands just like this. Song says like, y'all know it says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is. Come on, sing. Oh, give thanks. Oh, give thanks. Come on, unto the Lord. Unto the for Lord. He for he is good. Yes, he is. Good. Oh, give thanks. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good, for he is worthy, worthy, for he is good. Yes, he is good, for he is worthy, worthy, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Yes, he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Why? For he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is For he is worthy, worthy, for he is good. Yes, he is good, for he is worthy, worthy, for he is good. Yes, he is To the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Real big, can you help us say he's worthy? worthy. Yeah. He's worthy, for he is good. Yes, he is good, for he is worthy. Good. One more, come yes, on. Oh, 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 give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks 
unto the Lord, for he is good. Come on, come yes, on, real big saints, worthy, worthy, he's worthy, for he is good. Yes, he is good, for he is worthy, worthy, for he is good. Yes, right there again, for he's worthy. Worthy, for he is good. Yes, he is good. For he is worthy. Worthy, for he is good. Yes, he is good. For he is good. Real good. Yes, he is good. For he is good. Yes, he is good. For he is good. Yes, he is good. Come on, if you know he's good, come on and give him a praise. Shall we pray? Gracious God, our Father, how we thank you. God, thank you for just another day of worship. God, thank you just for another opportunity. God, to give you praise. God, as the song says, oh, give thanks. And God, it's not just to anyone, but God, to the Lord. God, to who you are. The same God who woke us up this morning is the same God who is the creator of the earth. The same God that allowed us to walk in this place of worship this morning is the same God who died on a hill called Calvary. The same God that allowed us to lift our hands this morning is the same God that said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. The same God that allow us to sing hymns on this wonderful worship morning is the same God that rose one Sunday morning with all power in heaven and earth in your hands. And so God, we have a reason to give your name praise. For you are good. Yes, God, you are good. And so God, we give honor to you today. God, this is the day that you have made. And God, you told us to give honor to your name. And so God, that's what we come to do this morning. We're not worried about who's sitting next to us. We're not worried about what the next person says. God, it's time to praise and worship your name. God, so much is on our mind, but we come to worship your name. So much hell we've been through this week, but it's time to worship your name so much bad news in the world God but it's time to worship your name so much bad going on in our society in the community on the news and judicial system but God it's time God to worship your name because God we understand that as believers that as ones who believe in the true name of Jesus regardless of what's going on in our lives God you reign and you rule this world and so, God, we dare not come in this place as if we have it all together. But, God, we confess our sins to you. And, God, we ask if you will clean our hearts and then clear our heads. That, God, when the word comes, when it's time to worship your name, God, there's nothing distracting us from giving your name praise. Because, God, you are worthy. The God of all the praise. Thank you for this church called New Pilgrim Rest. Thank you for a leader at New Pilgrim Rest. Thank you for the members in Pilgrim Land. God, we come to give your name praise. And God, as we come collectively, we ask if your Holy Spirit, God, not invite you into this place because you were here before we got here. But God, we ask if you would just reign and rule, have control of this worship. And God, it's in Jesus' name that we forever continue to pray. In Jesus' name, amen.
into my heart holy spirit give me a word that will bring new life words of the wings of the morning the dark night will fade away speak to my heart speak to my heart holy spirit give me a word that will bring new life words of the wings of the morning the dark night will fade away yeah. speak to my heart lord speak to my heart holy spirit a message of love to encourage me you lifted my heart from despair how you loved me and care for me if you speak to my heart I said, speak to my heart, Holy Spirit, a message of love to encourage me. You lifted my heart from despair, how you love me and care for me. Just speak to my heart, speak to my heart. Speak to my heart, oh, speak to my heart, oh, speak to my heart. Here we go. It says, speak to my heart, Lord. Give me your holy word. If I can't hear from you, then I'll know what to do. I won't go alone, I'll never go on my own, just let your spirit guide, and let your word abide, say it. Speak, speak to my heart, Lord, mm -hmm. give me a holy word, if I can't hear from you, then I'll know what to do. I won't go alone. Oh, I'll never go on. Never go on my own. Just let your spirit guide and let your word abide. Speak, Speak to, to my heart, Lord. Lord. Give me your holy word. If I can't hear from you, then I know what to do. I won't go alone. I'll never go on my own. Just let your spirit guide and let your word abide. Speak to my heart, Lord. Give me your holy word. If I can't hear from you, then I know what to do. I won't go alone. I never go on my own. Just let your spirit guide and let your word abide. Speak to my heart, Lord. Give me your holy word. If I can't hear from you, then I'll know what to do. I won't go alone. I'll never go on my own. Just let your spirit guide and let your word abide. Speak to my heart. I said, speak to my heart. Speak to my heart. One more time, speak to my heart, Lord. Speak to my heart, Lord. Give me your holy word. If I can't hear from you, then I know what to do. I won't go alone. I'll never go on my own. Just let your spirit guide and let your word abide. Speak to my heart. Speak to my heart. Oh, speak to my heart. Oh, speak 
to my heart right here speak to my heart yeah thank you come on let's church say amen. amen can we say amen again what a joy and privilege it is to be back in the house of praise and prayer just one more, one more time. Uh, if you woke up this morning, you ought to woke up praising God for another chance to be in the land of the dying on your way to the land of the living. It's just good to be here. And we have a God that not only wakes us up, but he keeps us clothed in our right mind. Amen. We have a God who not only takes care of us at night, but he meets us in the morning. And so we just want to give his name, praise, honor, and glory. Let me say good morning to New Pilgrim Rest, uh, who's on site, and those of you who are off site uh, via uh, Facebook Live, thank and praise God for this grand, grand day that we have here on this morning. Let me just, for I forget started, let me just share with uh, New Pilgrim Rest um, some good news. Uh, some good news. Uh, at your door lab, uh, we'll be having a clinic here uh, in the next uh, three weeks, we will have a clinic right here in our church, a full service clinic, the first church in West Dallas to have a clinic in their own church. A amen. Can you say amen? Amen. And listen, no one will be turned away. Uh, it's, it's good to have insurance, but for those who don't have insurance, you can come uh, and receive services at this clinic uh, here at New Pilgrim Rest, uh, they are working on the, the contractors are working right now. Uh, they should be finished in four days. Uh, and then the clinic will open sometime before Christmas or a little bit after Christmas. Amen. It will go from 8 to 5 every, every Monday through Friday. Sometime it will be open on Saturday. So we have a clinic. Listen, New Pilgrim, I don't know if you know it or not, but we are a blessed and favored church. A amen. We are a blessed and favored church, and we give all praise and honor to God. Let, let, me, let me think. I, I don't want I, I wanna, I to miss him. Let me thank Pastor uh, Dr. David Wilson, who recommended uh, us for this clinic uh, here in West Dallas. There will be one in Oak Cliff, and there will be one in Grand Prairie, and there will be one in Garland. But we are the only church uh, in West Dallas that will have our own full-service clinic uh, listen, they will have drive-through if you, if you need a COVID, uh, uh, get a COVID shot or, or whatever, you can just drive. You don't have to come in the clinic. They're going to be set up in the back, and you can just drive through uh, and get some of the services that they offer. Flu shots and all, we'll have it done right here at New Pilgrim Rest. Amen, amen. Thank and praise God for what he's doing in and through us. Uh, how grateful we are for this priceless privilege. Listen, we're going to have one of our sons to preach for us on this morning. He's no stranger to us uh, in the personhood of Reverend Anzel Tyrone Combs. He's going to come and share a word with us on, on this morning. On this morning, Tyrone is going to be up preaching to us on, on this morning. On this morning. A amen. He's going to come and bring a rich, royal, regal, and ready and revealing word to us on this morning. So I want you to elevate your right hands as a token of respect as Reverend Tyrone Combs comes in his own way. Precious God, our Father, we thank you again. God, you have been so good to us. And God, we give honor and we give praise to your name. God, thank you for a day that was not promised to us and God, not deserved to us. But God, it was your grace and it was your mercy. God, we give praise to your name. Now, God, it's preaching time and God there may be someone wondering is there a word today and God we do understand that with the power of your Holy Spirit God you can speak and you can save souls 
So God, we ask now, God, if you would, God, not hide me, but stand in me. That God, someone can see a sinner like me being used by a savior like you. You know, God, it's in Jesus' name we forever continue to pray. Amen. Amen. And the church said amen. 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 Certainly giving honor and praises to God who uh, is the head of my life and certainly to uh, our pastor this morning. Amen. As he uh, prepares to leave. Amen. Let's give our pastor a hand. <clears throat> Praise God for his uh, love, for his uh, kindness, for his concern for a son. Amen. Uh, it's, it's always been said that uh, no one cares uh, how they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Amen. And we certainly have care in our pastor and our leader. Amen. And so I give praise to him for allowing me to stand where he stands faithfully every Sunday. Amen. To preach. Amen. To us. Amen. And then certainly I would be at a miss if I recognized the king of the house and the queen of the house. Amen. To Sister Bell. Amen. Amen. In her absence. Amen. I don't want to hold you uh, entirely too long. Uh, there is a familiar passage. Uh, if you would stand with me for the reading of God's word. Amen. I want to take a look at a very uh, familiar passage, uh, Luke chapter 17. Amen. I want to begin reading at verse 15. And as you are turning to the pages, say amen to my brothers in the ministry. Amen, Reverend McCoy, amen, Reverend Adel Miller, and Reverend Leo Davis and his absence. Luke chapter 17, verse 15, say amen if you have it. The Bible says, and one of them, when he saw that he was healed, he turned back with a loud voice glorified God verse 16 says and fell down on his face at his feet giving him thanks and the Bible says and he was a Samaritan amen I just want to talk for a little bit about don't forget to tell God thank you you may be seated. I love hearing the story. And perhaps you may have heard the story about the father who taught his daughter how to drive in a storm. As his daughter drove down the old dirt road, she noticed that the clouds had begun to get dark. The father, well aware of the upcoming storm, he simply told his daughter to just keep on driving. As she drove, his daughter noticed that the rain had become rougher than what it was when it began. And the daughter said to her father that the other cars have already pulled over to the side of the road. And do you think this is a good time for us to do the same thing? And the father said to his child that, baby, the only thing I want you to do is just keep on driving. It was just a few miles up the road that as the daughter was steering through the storm, she smiled when she saw the storm cease on their section of the road. 
And it was suddenly within a matter of seconds after the storm ceased, she finally heard her father speak. He said, stop. Step out on the side of the street because I got something that I want to show you. The father said, if you look back to see where we came from, you will see that we made it through the storm, but there are others still in the storm. And sometimes, my child, God teaches us that if we stop in the storm, we'll never be able to say that God can bring us through the storm. And so now that we've made it through the storm, put this car in park and give God some praise by telling him thank you. And my Christian kinsmen and kinfolk, perhaps that was a prompt for you to give God praise today. Because even through problems and struggles that drive you to want to pull over on the side of the road, because of the power of God, your praise this morning is that it was the Father in heaven that kept me driving through the storms of life. And now that you've survived your storms, you've come today to give God some praise on this morning. I'm talking to someone today that the reason you ought to rejoice is because you remember driving through the sunny skies of life and the more you drove, the darker the clouds dimmed. But because you kept driving through the storm, when you turn around and look back through the lanes of life of just how far you come, your parallel parking, you're putting the car in park this morning just so you can pull over and give God the praise. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking to someone today that, that, that you struggled staying steadfast through steering through the storms of life. You kept your hands on the wheel and your head on your whereabouts, and yet storms got harder and harder. Bills didn't get no better, and sickness didn't get well soon. B -b Bills didn't get no better, and, and family couldn't stand family, and friends didn't seem friendly. Foes forced you to frustration, and hardship and marriages almost drove you off the road of holy matrimony. But the good news about the good news of God is that you discovered that since God R-E-I-G-N reign, you can make it through the R-A-I-N reign. That since God reigns and sits on the throne, then I can make it through the storm and thunderous times. And so I've come declaring to the fact that yes, I've been through the storm and rain. But hallelujah on this Sunday morning because I've made it. And since I've made it through, I'm coming to a halt on this holy morning. I'm shouting hallelujah all by myself. And I'm telling God, thank you for all he's done. Have I got a witness? Well, well, well this, this, is, this is the gospel writer Luke penning this passage. As, as, as we look at this particular passage, it's priority that we focus on both the pinsman and the purpose for his pinsmanship. You still with me? I, I, I want you to notice. I want you to notice that 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 when you study the gospel writer Luke, you'll discover that he writes for several purposes, and 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 due to the allotted time, I can't I can't I can't give them all to you. But but one of the reasons that Luke pins the gospel of Luke is is that first of all, he wants to give both the 
biblical audience and the modern day readers a better understanding of what we have through the Christian faith by way of Jesus Christ, his sacrifice, and salvation. You still with me? He, 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 he writes to provide believers with a better understanding of not only what, but also who we placed our beliefs in regarding salvation through Jesus Christ. He, 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 he shares with us, uh, one thing our professor shared with us uh, in, in our college course was that the author's intention is to stress and seek what God has given or supplied rather in scripture in order to share with not only the biblical audience but the readers like you and I today. And, and if, if, I, if I could just say it another way, listen, Luke literally says to you and I that there's really no joy in being saved. That, that if you don't have the information for our inspiration on why you are saved. Uh, uh, and, and can I just tell you, as Christian believers, we have some information that gives us inspiration. Because when you know who you are in Christ and what you have in faith through Christ, then you come to discover that because of salvation alone, you have reasons to give God praise. So much so that, that listen, that if God determines and decides not to do anything else for me in my life, then I'm going to praise his name. I'm going to thank him still because he's already helped me teach this. And, and, and so I may have to suffer sometimes. But I can celebrate because of salvation. And in his suffering, I suffer. It never supersedes the suffering my Savior suffered for a sinner like me. I may have a jagged and jacked up journey. But I'm still justified because of salvation. God is my judge and Jesus is my lawyer. And no matter what the jury says, the judge has the last word. The junk that I go through and the junk that I put myself through, the justifying power of Jehovah still stands because of salvation. I'm not as squeaky clean as the next saint, but I'm sanctified because of salvation. Jesus loved me just the way I am, but he refuses to keep me the same. I still wake up coming short of the glory of God, but my Savior through sanctification. What I couldn't see yesterday, he's seeing to it that I get better and better every single day of my life. I'm flawed, but because of salvation, I found forgiveness and favor with the Father. I got some burdens and bruises, but I'm baptized because of salvation. I get weak sometimes, but because of salvation, I've got God's grace to get me through strength when in times of weakness. My mess ups are new every morning, but because of salvation, new mercy follows me all the days of my life. And I have all of this, and it's because of salvation through Jesus Christ. And since I have a Savior who supplied salvation, since Jesus justifies me through justification, and since God through his Son and Holy Spirit has supplied us with sanctification, then you ought to just pause and give God glorification. And I, again, I would declare unto you this morning that if the Lord doesn't do anything else for you, then God hasn't just done enough. He's done more than enough. Well, well the, the second reason uh, Luke writes the book of Luke is because he wants us to understand that salvation is not only for the Jews, but it's for the Gentiles and the Samaritans as well. Keep, keep in mind that again, Luke is not an original disciple. 
and I like this because it's good to note because although Luke wasn't there with the original 12 disciples, what they received, he still received. Oh my goodness. If, 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 I, if I could just say it another way, listen, Luke didn't get what the 12 got when they got it. But the fact is, he still got it. And, and perhaps, possibly that's your praise today because truth be told that maybe I didn't get what you got when you got it. But the fact remains the same, I still got it. Well, 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 well listen, if, if that didn't ring a bell, well, 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 can, can I just tell you that uh, the good news is that maybe I didn't get saved when you got saved. But the fact is, I'm still saved. God didn't bless me when and like he blessed you, but the truth is, I'm still blessed. Maybe the food you have on your table don't look like the food on my table, but the truth is, we both went to bed full last night. And the reason I'm praising God is because what God has done for you, he's done it for us all. And this is where we find ourselves in the passage on today. Jesus showing us once again that he can help anybody and everybody. And after God has helped you, after God has stepped into your life, if God has done anything for you, then you ought to pause and tell God thank you. Uh, the text says, and one of them. The text says, and one of them. Now, 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 of course, we already understand that as studiers of God's word, the question we're going to ask ourselves is, who is them? You still with me? And when we discover who them are in the text, notice, uh, they're not, uh, they're identified or introduced by illness rather than their name. Is that in your Bible? Um, no, no, notice Luke even church family says they're lepers, but doesn't even tell us how they got lepers. And, and I like this because Luke says that it really doesn't matter who they are or what their problem is. The reality of the matter is they all got a problem. And nowadays we care more about who or what a person has done than recognizing the fact that they all got a problem. And, and I like this because notice, notice that none of these men are family or friends. And, and the second thing that I've discovered is that uh, the only reason that they're in fellowship was because of the problem that they had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You still with me? Yeah. And, and according to the text, there is no real attachment to these brothers. Uh, Latoya, there, 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 there is uh, no real authority that they have over one another. There is no authentic association to these brothers. And because this is true, Luke 17 verse 15 says, and one of them. One of these men realized that when it comes time to giving praise to God, even if I have to do it by myself, I've decided to give God praise for all that he rightfully deserves. And might I suggest to you today, my brothers and sisters, that that's why it really shouldn't be hard for us to worship together in the first place. Because first of all, it doesn't matter who we are, we all got a problem. That, that while I'm trying to figure out what's wrong with you and you trying to figure out what's wrong with me, the truth is, it's something wrong with both of us. So we might as well just worship God together in the first place. 
But, but secondly, the reason it shouldn't be hard for us to worship together is because since Christ is the anointed one, then he is the only one who has authentic authority over my life. And since he's the true one, if I have to be the only one praising his name, then I can't let friends, family, foes, nor Facebook, nor anyone who has no authority, let me miss my opportunity so I'll praise him all by myself. And is there any authentic worshipers in the house this morning? Can you just nudge your neighbor this morning and tell your neighbor, neighbor, we got a problem. But we also got a problem solver and his name is Jesus. And ain't nothing or no one going to stop our worship on this morning. I got some problems, but I'm going to keep on praising God's name. I got some pains in my life, but I'm going to keep on praising God's name. I got some problematic people in my life that gives me hell every day of my life, but I'm going to keep on praising the name of God. Because since Jesus is the only one who has authentic authority over my life, then there's no problem that Jesus cannot solve. Well, uh, um, must I rush? Why, why should I tell God thank you? Uh, one reason that the Holy Spirit shared with me is that one reason I should give God praise or tell God thank you is because my problem allowed me to meet Jesus. Watch the text. Verse 15 says, and one of them. Is that in your Bible? Now, now, since and is a conjunction, we need to find the core of their conversation with Christ. And of course, we've always been taught that the text is what it says, but the context is why the text says what it says. And if we fail to read the context, then we miss the whole meaning of the text. You still with me? And so, and so, and so when, when did the conversation between Jesus and the lepers begin? Can we take a look at the text? Watch this. Verse 14 says, And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. Well, that's not the first conversation. Can I go back one more verse? Verse 13 says, and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. This ain't the first conversation that they had with Jesus. Can I go back another verse? Verse 12 says, and as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers which stood afar off. Now, 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 now this is good. This is part of the story, but it ain't the whole story. And we're living in a world today where folk, want, they'd rather take a half story than have a whole story. Don't you hate when people take half your information and they ain't got all the information, so they start using imagination and then they get the whole situation messed up? But, 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 but notice, watch this. How do I know their problem allowed them to meet Jesus? Because verse 11 says, and it came to pass. All right. As he went to Jerusalem, he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Yeah, yeah. Now, now, now notice the text says he went through. And, and I don't have to tell you because I know we already understand that if you had a map, you come to understand that Jesus, rather than going through Samaria, he could have very well went around Samaria. Yeah, yeah. And, and I like this because Jesus literally says that I wasn't born to walk around doing what the majority do. But I'm doing what others wouldn't do because I was born to make a difference. And, 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 and that's a word for someone today, listen, that, that even if you have to be a part of the minority crowd, just because the majority don't do what you're doing, 
If, if, if it doesn't necessarily mean that you're doing something wrong, but God could be very well trying to use you to show someone else that it's nothing wrong with being different. Uh, you, you know, and, and, I, and I appreciate a pastor who shared with us a long time ago that there's that nothing wrong with being a copycat just as long as you copy the right cat. But, but I also appreciate a pastor who also told us that there are going to be times where God will put you in a place where he's trying to show you that there's greater purpose for you and, 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 and the good news about it is God wants to use you to be a difference for somebody else. And, and here is the praise in the passage, just in case you missed it. Jesus says, I'm not going to treat you like everyone else would treat you, but I'm going to treat you differently because the world will treat you a whole nother way. And, and I thought I would have just had about four people to jump to their feet to give praise to the fact that, that, that where most people mapped around your area, Jesus came directly to your area. Is it anybody here who's praising God for the simple fact that where most people overlooked your problems, Jesus looked right at you and helped you with your problems? These men had a problem, and because of the problem, they discovered a problem solver. And if that's you this morning, then you ought to tell God, thank you. I'm praising God because my problem didn't push me away from Jesus, but it put me on the map with Jesus. And if the text says he went through, then it sounds like Jesus went through the middle. And the reason you ought to give God praise this morning is because while you were in the middle of some mess, mess allowed you to meet Jesus in the middle of your mess. I've been in the middle of some messed up situations, but I'm thanking God in the midst of my mess because I came to find out that the minute I got in mess, Jesus was with me in the middle of my mess. Watch the text, watch the text. Uh, uh, well, not only did their problem allow them to meet Jesus, uh, but the second reason is that everybody knew how to call on Jesus, but not everybody came back to tell Jesus thank you. It's right here in the text. Watch this. They knew how to call him, but they didn't know how to come back and say congratulations. Watch the text, y'all. If, if you look closely, it looks like Jesus didn't give too good a directions in his dialogue. Because verse 14 says, Luke said that Jesus said, here's what I want you to do. Go show yourselves to the priest. And Verse 15 says, and one of them, when he saw that he was healed, he turned back. And then in verse 17 and 18, Luke said that Jesus said, where are the nine? And not only where are the nine, but why they didn't come back with you? Therefore, thus, since Jesus said to leave but didn't tell them to come back, it looks like Jesus didn't give too good a directions in his dialogue. And, and, and one thing that the Holy Spirit shared with me was that you have some people who will contemplate or think about whether or not they'll thank God. But there are others who, that when they think about God, they can't help but come back to thank God. And I've just stopped by this morning to see the difference between someone who thinks about whether or not they'll thank God versus someone who, when they think about God, they can't help but thank God. And I don't know about you this morning, but when I think about the goodness of God, I can't help but thank God for the goodness of God. 
Am I preaching to some people in the pew this morning who you don't need to be pumped? You don't need to be primed, prompted, pulled, nor pushed. But when you ponder about the precious power of God, you can't help but to praise the name of God. I'm, I'm talking about times that when you start thinking about the benefits of God, you can't help but ask the questions, what shall I render unto the Lord? He woke you up this morning, you ought to pause and give God praise and tell him thank you. If you walk in and he gave you a chance to worship his name, you ought to pause and tell God thank you. If he protected you through this COVID pandemic without a sickness, you ought to pause and tell God thank you. If you had COVID and you survived sickness, you ought to pause and tell God thank you. If you have a job and it's helping you get from day to day, you ought to pause and tell God thank you. If you have an amount in your bank account and it's too low to count, but you discovering that you can count on God, you ought to tell God thank you. If you don't have enough lunch money for work to eat that the food that you want, but the food you got is still getting you through, you ought to tell God thank you. If you've been in danger, didn't know you was in danger until God got you out of danger, you ought to pause and tell God thank you. I'm trying to tell you this morning that when I think about the goodness of God, I can't help but give his name praise. Well, uh, everybody knew how to call him. But then everybody come back to give his name praise. Well, can, can I just give you one more and I'm going to let you go? Not only did their problem allow them to meet Jesus, and we discovered that Jesus got a call from everybody. But not everybody came back. But lastly, as I come to a close, the good news about the good news in this little portion of the passage is that this leper could care less about what people had to say about his praise. Watch the text. The text says, and one of them, when he saw that he was healed, he turned back with a loud voice and glorified God. Well, we, we, we've already discovered and determined that when the leper saw Christ cure him, the leper didn't need a cue card. He, he didn't need nobody to tell him to go back and tell God thank you. Luke says in verse 15, when he saw that he was healed, and can I just pause and tell you this morning, if you're looking at everybody but yourself, you'll never know what God has done for you. You're going to miss out on blessings watching other people blessing, missing your own blessing. But notice, not only did he not need a cue card, but the text says he wasn't quiet about it either. Because the text says he had a loud voice. Now I know some folks say it don't take all that. Preacher, it don't take all that hand clapping. All that hand waving and all that loud noise when you're giving praise to God. Can I just tell you that maybe it don't take all that for you. But when I think about what God has done for me, I'll clap my hands. I'll give God the praise. I'll wave my hands and give God the praise. I'll shout glory and give God praise. Psalms 47 says, oh, clap your hands. Psalms 34 says, oh, magnify. Psalms 100 says, make a joyful noise. So it may not take all that for you, but it take all that and more for me. The leper could care less about what people had to say about his praise because he turned back with a loud voice even if it meant parting ways and giving praise all by itself. 
And can I just tell you, someone today that giving God praise sometimes requires us to let some people go their own way. Sometimes you may find yourself in your own circle giving God praise. Notice Luke didn't say, and the leper gave him thanks. But Luke says he was giving him thanks. In other words, the leper didn't say thank you one time. But he kept on giving God praise. One thank you after another. And we sing the song that every time I turn around, he keeps on blessing me. And my question to you this morning is if God keeps on blessing you, then have you told him thank you on this morning? The Bible says that when he saw, he was healed. He glorified God. I can hear the leper saying, Jesus, I thank you. You could have left me where I was. I can hear the leper saying, you could have left me leprous. You could have left me for dead. You could have left me alone. But you came through to see about me. I hear the leper saying, others called on you. But they never came back to give you praise. And Jesus, just in case I don't get another chance to tell you thank you, I just want to pause and give your name some praise. I've been through too much hell in my life. I've been having to disassociate myself from the community. I was leprous. I couldn't wave at anybody and ask them how they doing. I couldn't do things like everyone else could in the worship service. And now that you've given me an opportunity, I just want to pause and tell you thank you. Well, good morning, New Pilgrim Rest. I got to let you go. But I'm reminded of a story. Two men that had graduated together. They always met up together for their class reunion. Both of the men were doing real good for themselves. Turned out to be real successful people. One of the men had become a real fine sports figure. And the other friend had become a very profound pastor in his city. Well, it was on this particular year that they decided that before the class reunion, they were going to go to the baseball game. The preacher decided that, well, since I'm going to go with you to the baseball game, why don't you come go to church with me in the morning? Well, the friend agreed. And they went to church the next morning. And after church, the preacher asked his friend, how did you like the worship service? He said, the friend said, oh, I love the worship service. And the message was real good. He said, but it was something that I didn't understand about the worship. He said, I just don't understand why everyone was jumping up and down in the worship service. They were doing all the shouting and the screaming. And the preacher didn't say anything. He just kept on driving. And as they went to the baseball game, after they left the baseball game, 
Uh, the sports figure said, did you like the baseball game? And the preacher said, they did a very good job. He said, but it's one thing that I didn't understand. He said they kept on jumping up and down every time somebody hit a home run. The sports figure said, yeah, they were proud of what the team had done. And the preacher turned and said, that's the same thing that we were praising about the God that we serve. We so proud of a man by the name of Jesus. He died out on that hill called Calvary. And it was the greatest home run that we've ever seen in our life. He hit a home run that no one else could ever hit. Because he died out on a hill called Calvary. But early Sunday morning, he got up with all power, heaven and earth in his hand. And so that's why we praise the name of God. I don't know what you come to do. But I come to give God praise. Tell him thank you. Tell him thank you. He's been too good and he's been too kind. He's been wonderful all the time. And I've just come to tell God thank you. Is it anybody here who's come to tell God thank you? Tell your neighbor instead of watching me, you ought to praise God's name. You might as well take my hand and let's praise God's name. I will bless the name of God at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. If I praise God all by myself, I'll be all right because God, he's worthy. He's worthy. Ain't he worthy? I say, ain't he worthy? Shout hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah in the name of God. If God has been good to you, I dare you to step away from your family. Step aside and give God praise. He's been good. He's been kind. Tell him thank you. I say tell him thank you. Ain't he all right? I say ain't he all right? Shout glory in the house of God. He's good. I say he's good. And one of these days, he's coming back. He's coming back. Shout yeah. Ain't he all right? Tell him thank you. Tell him thank you. If God has done anything, you ought to pause and tell him thank you. It's no secret that God has been good to us. And I think, I, I think I, I think our pastor would say it like this. I, I, got, I got a few reasons. Because number one, he woke us up this morning. And if, if the first reason don't help you, listen, the second reason is he woke you up this morning. And of course, if the first and the second reason don't help you, listen, the third reason is you ought to tell God thank you is because he woke you up this morning. And if God has done anything you ought to pause and give him praise. As, as we get ready to open the doors of worship, invitation to discipleship, listen, it's going to be complicated to tell God thank you when you're watching everybody but what God has done for you. The only way you can show appreciation is by seeing what someone else has done for you. 
And if we can't take the time to see what God has done, it's going to be hard to go back and tell him thank you. I wouldn't make it to Thanksgiving 2021 before giving him a pre-thanks before Thanksgiving. It would be a black eye to God's kingdom to tell God thank you on Thanksgiving Day and forget that he's got us to Thanksgiving Day as the doors of the church are open. This is a good time to tell God thank you. Won't you come? Won't you come? has been extended. Amen. As Pastor would say, let me thank uh, B.B. and C.C. Winans. Amen. This morning. Amen. Come on, let's give the music ministry. Amen. A hand. <clears throat> Amen. All right. Amen. Uh, time is thank you for viewing Pilgrim Land News. And if you would like to be a part of this worship service, please watch this quick video about Givelify. Thank you for viewing Pilgrim Land News. And if you would like to be a part of this worship service, please watch this quick video about Givelify. Thank you. Givelify is giving simplified. 
Givelify is the simplest, most beautiful way to give and track donations to the place of worship or charity of your choice. You're not limited to the cash you have on hand. There's no need to write checks, and there are no complicated forms to fill out or text message codes to remember. Givelify automatically pinpoints your location and intelligently identifies the fundraiser, worship service, or conference you're attending without the need to search. Since Givelify automatically detects where you are, making a donation can be completed in as few as three taps. Tap 1. Use one of the pre-configured denominations to choose your donation amount. Tap 2. Select the campaign to which you'd like to contribute. Tap 3. With your stored credit or debit card, complete your donation in one tap and get an immediate donation receipt. Setting up recurring giving is a simple two-tap process. Tap the frequency you'd like and you'll never forget to make your gift. Givelify lets you easily see your complete donation history. Mark the place of worship you normally attend as your home for quick one-tap access. Givelify. Tap. Give. Done. Thank you for joining in this worship experience on this morning. We pray that you were blessed by the message. Uh, come back and be with us on next week. We pray that God will continue to bless you, guide you, and guard you, and grant you His grace as you continue to serve Him in this kingdom. Bless you, and come back and see us. Thank you for joining